Over the years, I've been giving a few talks, and each time I thank the organizer. But this time, I really mean I want to thank the organizer. Um, a few years ago, maybe over 40, um, in 69, I passed what some of you may uh, still know, aggregation, and um, with all the people from uh, 68. And um, in July, I had uh, two options. Uh, I mean, three options, actually. Going to teach in a high school somewhere in the middle of the country. I was not excited. And then I had the, an offer from Grenoble and an offer from uh, Lumini. Lumini was just uh, being created, so it was just uh, no man's land, and there was this half of this huge building of nine floors. And, you know, people were pushing me, you know, Grenoble, you know, this is the high point of PDEs, uh, Malgrange is there, you should go, blah, blah, blah. And at that time, I decided that, no, I'm not the kind of guy who is going to leave Marseille. I'm going to stay in Marseille for the rest of my life. Well, this afternoon, I'll be happy 40 years later to go back to the Kalank. All right, so I'm going to talk about um, uh, minfield game, and uh, I didn't know... Uh, you know, what would be covered in some of the uh, tutorial lectures. So I'm going to talk about something a little bit off the main beaten path. And I'm going to talk about games with major and minor players. Uh, and then uh, at the end, I will talk about something that I wanted really bad to talk about, but for which I didn't have the time to actual, actually do uh, computation and prepare uh, illustration. Uh, for for today, you know, at, at, at my age, if you start learning a new programming language, it takes uh, more time than what you think. All right, so um, I'm going to talk about um, mean field game with the major and minor player. And uh, someone told me that this was working, but maybe not. Oh. Defy any logic. This is a left-handed uh, gadget, I guess, not a right-handed guy. All right, so um, this is the typical uh, starting point if the models are models with the stochastic differential equation. Um, the second part of the talk, I'm going to talk about an application where the model will not be given by stochastic differential equation, but at least uh, this will give us... <sighs> This will give us a little bit of a sense of uh, what uh, we're talking about. I'm just playing with the, this gadget, but it doesn't seem to be. Why do I go back? Here we go. All right, so we have a major player, and its state will be denoted by uh, with the superscript 0, and we have a generic. Uh, player, and they will be in large number, and this is why I call it generic, which state will be denoted by xt, and both uh, states are evolving according to a stochastic differential equation, the Ito processes, but what is important to notice is that the control of the major player, which will be denoted by alpha superscript zero, of course occurs in the dynamic of the state of the major player. Uh, this guy controls its own uh, destiny, but it also appears in the dynamics of the minor players. And uh, so this is in this sense that the major player influences uh, the uh, minor players. Also, the state x0t of the major player occurs uh, appears in the dynamics of the state of the min minor players. So uh, if you think in terms of financial application, you look at the financial system, for example, in the US, you have thousands and thousands of small banks, and then you have a small number, finite number, of systemically important institutions. Think of Goldman Sachs. 
And whatever Goldman Sachs does is going to affect uh, whatever all the other banks do. On the other hand, whatever the local bank in Irvine, California does is not going to worry too much Goldman. Okay? So the dynamics of the major player uh, state is not affected by the individual uh, state of the player. Still, you have this mu t uh, entering in both um, uh, stochastic differential equation. And this mu t represents the um, empirical distribution of the states of the minor players. So the major player feels the field of the minor players. It does not feel them individually. Goldman, as I said, doesn't care about what uh, the savings and loan in Irvine do. But on the other hand, uh, Goldman may worry about the proportion of savings and loans doing this or doing that. Okay? So that's how the system is mean field. It is mean field among the, major, major, sorry, among the minor players. And this field of minor players is taken into account by the major player. But on the other hand, um, uh, the major player state doesn't depend upon the individual minor players. So this creates this dissymmetry. And we're going to assume that we have a large number an infinite number, a continuum, if you want, of minor players and just one minor player, a major player. And this major player could be multidimensional. In other words, you could have Goldman, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, but only in finite numbers. Then each of these players, major or minor, uh, incurs a certain cost. And the cost, as usual, is given by an expectation of uh, the effect of a running cost, an integral from 0 to the terminal time capital T, and a terminal uh, cost, G0, G. And again, we have the same structure, namely the cost to the major player depends upon the field, upon the measure mu t of whatever the minor players do. But on the other hand, for the minor players, uh, the cost running or terminal depends upon what exactly uh, the state of the major player is, x0 t, or even uh, what actions the major player is taking. Wunderbar. All right, so uh, I'm just going to uh, give a few slides to uh, propose a way to formulate the problems uh, by the way, most everything that I'm going to say, except that uh, uh, the hint at the calculation, which I couldn't finish, is already in a beautiful book that uh, Francois will sell you at, uh, at a discount if you behave well during the summer school. Um, so the, we're going to assume that um, uh, the, the controls are first in open loop form. Uh, open loop control are very convenient um, uh, and, and probabilists love them. Um, practically, I just believe they're nonsense. They're not practical. And in particular, if you want to do a numeric uh, calculation, like uh, Eva's been explaining to us this morning, you know, you need to work with closed loop. Okay. However, uh, you know, there are many uh, mathematical results that you can first prove and prove for uh, open loop. Um, um, formulation of the problem. Uh, and uh, I, as I said, you know, as probabilist, uh, they are very convenient. So the notion of uh, open loop can be formulated here by saying that the control alpha 0 will be a function of time and the entire path of the white noise of the uh, state of the major player. The control of the main minor player, similarly, will be a function of time and the entire path of the white noise of uh, driving the equation of the major player and the white noise uh, driving the equation of the minor players. Okay? Who sees this, uh, uh, this uh, white noise and this path? I do not know. Okay, so practically, if I wanted to construct this uh, these open loop control and take that as an action, I would have to see the entire path. And in practice, as I say, unfortunately, we, we rarely see them. Okay? Uh, Sometimes we can, but, but it's very rare. Um, and the function of this path will be functions phi 0 and phi, which are deterministic functions defined on this uh, spaces, the time, uh, the path space, and taking value in uh, 
uh, sets A0 and A where the control state value, okay? All right, so when you s formulate a major and minor uh, model, uh, you first look at um, uh, the problem of the major player, and you're going to see how does the major player going to uh, respond to uh, the, the field of minor player. So you first assume that the, uh, my, all the minus player, which are behaving identically, uh, choose an open loop control, so a function phi, which is going to be a function of, as I say, time and the two uh, white noise path. And once, when all this minor player use this control, uh, then the major player is facing the following problem. The equations for its states uh, is the same as uh, before. And then we have an equation now for uh, the state of the minor player where the function uh, phi comes in. These two equations are coupled because, uh, of course, W0 appears uh, in, in both of them. And now mu t is going to be taken to be the conditional uh, law of xt given uh, the path of the uh, white noise of the major player. And so the major player problem is going to be to search for an optimal control, phi zero star. This will be the optimum. Minimizing, minimizing is cost, minimizing is cost, where now uh, the cost uh, depends upon uh, the function phi, uh, which is chosen by all the uh, uh, um, um, minor players, okay? But the points that I want to make here is that no matter what, the problem, the optimal control that the major player has to solve to find its best response to the decision, the behavior of this minor player is an optimal control of the mckeen vlasov type because the, the distribution um, uh, uh, of the state here that is only the marginal of xt enters into the dynamic of the equation. Okay? So if you formulate uh, the best response of the major player in this way, the problem you have here is an optimal control of mckeen vlasov dynamics. Okay. Um, now, you know, we want to look at the best response of uh, uh, the minor player uh, to uh, the major player. So we're going to assume that uh, the major player chooses um, a strategy of control alpha zero given by um, feedback function phi zero, which is a function of the entire path. And we're going to assume that the field of minor players choose uh, a feedback function phi, which is now a function of two uh, white noises. Okay? And once this is done, the dynamics of the two states, x0 and xt, uh, solve this um, uh, stochastic differential equation, okay? which is a stochastic differential equation, again, of the mckeen vlasov type, because the law of xt conditioned by uh, the uh, white noise w0 uh, enters in this equation. But this is not a control problem. You find, you solve this SDE, which is an SDE of the mckeen vlasov type, but once you solve this SDE, you use the law of this uh, solution and you inject that uh, into the um, optimization that uh, the, minor, the minor player, the typical minor player should uh, uh, solve, and now you have an optimal control of the regular type. Uh, this is not of the mckeen vlasov type, okay? And once you can solve it as a function of phi zero and phi, uh, you, we're gonna denote by phi bar star uh, the uh, optimal open loop uh, control, which is given by a function of the uh, y noise path. Let's assume that um, that this uh, can be solved. Let's even assume that it is unique. And now, finding a Nash equilibrium for a system of major and minor player is finding a fixed point to the best response map, namely finding a set of 
couple of feedback function phi zero and phi uh, satisfying this, this equality. So I want to emphasize the fact that I want to find a Nash equilibrium for the whole system, including major player and minor player. This is going to be in contrast with uh, uh, a simple example I will give, uh, um, I will show a slide um, uh, in a minute. Okay. So this, if I can solve that, will give me an open loop uh, Nash equilibrium uh, for the system. Okay. Uh, what is the closed loop version of this problem? I didn't solve it. Of course, I just formulate the problem. But the formulation of major and minor uh, models of mean field game has been all over the map. Uh, these models were introduced by Huang and then Kane and Nurian, and um, uh, many people have written paper on it. But I think there is a, a major confusion in how this model should be set. Anyway, so now, if you want to have a closed loop version of this problem, would you do exactly the same thing, where now the control for, uh, the, um, for the major player and for the minor players are given by feedback function, but now they're functions of the trajectory of the sample path of the states. So that you know, still may be unreasonable to imagine that I can keep track of the entire path of the state before I make my decision at time t, but at least it is more reasonable from a practical point of view. And now if you want to have a Markovian version, a version for which we can do actual uh, computation and write PDEs, et cetera, et cetera, you will now take the function, the feedback function phi zero and phi to be only function of the state at time t. Okay? Like it's in there. Now, why do I bother so much to um, uh, write all this uh, uh, annoying uh, definition is the fact that in general, um, you know, these um, form of the definition of an open loop problem or closed loop problems play a major role in game theory when you work with finitely many players. If you work with finitely many players looking for uh, open loop equilibrium will lead to some solution which can be different than um, um, closed loop Nash equilibria. Even, even if the open loop Nash equilibrium which you find is in closed loop form. So it's not enough to have an open loop Nash equilibrium in closed loop form to be able to say, I got a closed loop Nash equilibrium. That's the case. Okay. However, and this is not really a theorem, but it can be proved in many cases, and it's some sort of a folk theorem. When the size of the population grow, when n, the number of players, tends to infinity, and this is basically the situation we set ourselves up when we do mean field game, these differences disappear in the wash. Okay? And this is why very often when you study mean field game, you don't care so much about closed loop, uh, open loop. Okay? Because whether you tackle for one or the other, very often uh, the solutions are the same. Okay. Unfortunately, when you deal with major and minor players, that's not going to be the case. Okay? Because the limit n tends to infinity, uh, which is going to give a lot of averaging happening. You know, you remember my the 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 the, the idiosyncratic white noise attached to each of the players, they're going to force some sort of law of large number, and you're going to have things with a um, randomness which is going to disappear. And so while the randomness disappear, uh, the differences between the closed loop and open loop disappear as well. That's not the case here, because the W0 and the X0 are going to remain. We have one major player or finite number of major player. We have a large number of minor players. They have their idiosyncratic noise. When the size of the minor population grows to infinity, you get your averaging, but you never average out the noise of the major player. And you saw that uh, uh, the measure that I was taking were conditional measure. So this averaging is not there. And it is likely, and we're going to see example, that um, closed loop and uh, open loop 
uh, Nash equilibrium still differ still in a mean field limit. Okay? So the best response uh, being found in these classes of, in these classes of uh, control, again, finding a Nash equilibrium in fi is finding a fixed point. Okay? So this is an example uh, where, uh, of a paper which was started years ago and which is still not finished, but where, um, you know, it looks like there is a major, it looks like there are minor players, but it is not uh, a Nash equilibrium of this type that we would be looking for, okay? When you do contract theory, uh, you have a principle, and, um, you know, for my friend Rene, I would say, let's say the regulator of, um, uh, the European uh, community, n not the US, because we, we didn't sign the, the Paris Accord. It's not for us, this sort of thing. So uh, we have a regulator, and the regulator basically talked to all the uh, electric company, RWE, ADF, et cetera, and tell them, okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Uh, this is the contract that, uh, that I give you. You're gonna be rewarded for uh, redu reducing your emission. You're gonna be penalized if you screw up and you go over your cap, whatever. The regulator decides. So this is the major player. Uh, and, and then you have the mass of minor player, all the little uh, electric operators, the little people like at ADF. And so they're gonna react to this regulation and they're gonna choose a behavior which depends upon uh, the regulation set in place by, um, by the, the regulator. So you have also the symmetry between a small number of player, the big player being the regulator, and a large number of player, uh, the electric operators. But now this is different. The Nash equilibrium will be a Nash equilibrium among all the electric operators, not involving the, uh, the regulator. The Nash equilibrium will be among the minor players only. So that's a slightly different um, uh, kind of problem uh, than, than the one that I had before, where before I want a Nash equilibrium uh, among everybody. In other words, I want the major player not having any incentive to change uh, his contract uh, once uh, the uh, minor players have chosen what to do. All right, so when can we solve this mean field game? We do not have many uh, uh, cl large classes of problems. So I'm going to um, uh, stick to two uh, simple models for which we can actually analytically uh, solve the problems and, and do some numerics. I'm gonna first look at linear quadratic model, and then I'm gonna look at models for which the state space is finite in which case we will not have a stochastic differential equation, but uh, intuitively we can make sense of how things are working. So a linear quadratic model will come in uh, in this form. Uh, the, no, still not working. The uh, x0, the state of the major player, will uh, satisfy a linear uh, equation, uh, and I assume that the volatility is constant, and what is entering uh, in this linear equation is x bar t, which is the conditional expectation because it's linear, the way the measure comes in will be only through, the, through its mean. And so the, the minor players influence the major player decision only through the mean. And their dynamics, the dxt, uh, involves also, also their means, but they involve the dynamics of the minor player state involve x zero t, which is the state of the major player. And same thing for the cost, except that now we take them quadratic, linear quadratic, linear dynamic quadratic cost. Okay, so you have the same type of equation. Again, the mean x t bar uh, of the uh, states of the minor players enter, enters the cost of the major player, uh, but, um, um, but that's the only way the minor players will uh, influence the, um, the dynamics and the cost of the major player, okay? So the reason uh, we can do that is that, again, uh, you know, we can write down uh, the, this optimization problem that I uh, mentioned before, 
you have linear dynamic quadratic cost, so this optimization problem reduced to big matrix Riccati equation, okay? Uh, and so whether you do that through uh, an FBSD or through another approach, you know, you end up with big, um, uh, big um, matrix Riccati equation, and hopefully you can solve them, and in this particular case, we can actually solve them in the case of open loop di directly, and, and we find uh, a solution. Uh, in the case of closed loop, uh, things are a little bit more uh, difficult. However, uh, if we search for controls in a sp specific form, because we know in advance that the controls are going to be linear uh, in the states, so we look already for controls which are linear in the states and, and the mean. Now, when we try to find that these controls satisfy the Nash equilibrium, you, we perturb that with general control. So, so it's really a Nash equilibrium that I will find, but I search for a Nash equilibrium in this form, but that's not a restricted notion of a Nash equilibrium. That's gonna be a general Nash equilibrium. And then again, you know, we can formulate uh, the optimization problem uh, in the form of a large FBSDE, and of course, they are fine, and we solve them through uh, solving a large uh, matrix Riccati equation. However, in this particular case, they're different. So, so this means that the open loop and the closed loop uh, solutions are different. So that happens even for a mean field game problem, and that happened even for linear quadratic uh, case. So um, the, as I said, you know, one of the reasons why I went through this uh, little song and dance was to emphasize the fact that uh, uh, that's, that's, that's an issue, which are the important one. Uh, I mentioned that already three or four times. So I'm going to give you just a, a very simple, uh, naive application. Um, so, so, so let's imagine that um, uh, you, you're following um, uh, uh, a beehive. You know, you want to see how the bees move from one location to another. So how do they do that? So, you know, the, the queen is getting old. There is a new queen in the bunch. So they want to get rid of, of the, um, they want to get rid of the old queens. So uh, the queen uh, leaves the group uh, with a certain number of worker bees following the, the queen. Uh, they didn't notice that there was a young and more beautiful queen, so they, they followed the old queen. And so they go and sit on a branch of a, on a tree, and, uh, and they wait. And then a few uh, bees, called the streaker bees, they go and they uh, look around in the neighborhood. They try to find a new location for for the hive. So um, once they think they found a new location, they come back to the tree where the, the old queen and the workers are waiting there, and they start dancing and dancing, trying to um, convince the, this group to, to follow them. And eventually, uh, one of them is uh, dancing so well that uh, the group decides, okay, we're gonna follow uh, this uh, streaker bee, and they follow the streaker bee to the new location. That's a mean field game problem, just kidding. Uh, I'm gonna pretend that's a mean field game problem and that's a linear quadratic mean field game problem. That's a linear quadratic mean field game problem with a major and minor player and we're gonna see how it works. So we're gonna model only the velocity because it's simpler if you model uh, the velocity and the position, it's a little bit more complicated mathematically because um, you, know, you have hypoelliptic diffusion instead of diffusion and things are not this simple. So, we're going to denote by V0N the velocity of this streaker B, the B which is going to go to the final destination, which knows where it is and which wants to drag uh, the old queen and the bunch uh, to this new location. So that's going to be the velocity of the streaker B. And you know the, the, the control is alpha zero up to noise. The, the streaker B controls uh, its own velocity. Uh, we have n, we have n, uh, capital N, uh, bees uh, with the queen, and so they control the velocity, alpha i t, and they have their own idiosyncratic noise. What is the cost uh, to the, uh, to the streak b? So you have three components uh, to the cost, okay, and we take a, a linear combination of these three components. The first component is 
the square of the difference between the velocity of the streak of B and the optimal velocity it would take to go from point A to point B. So in other words, this new T, this new T here is uh, a deterministic function which if the B used that as a velocity, it will take from, her from point A to point B, okay? So then the second term is I want the velocity of the streak of B to be not very different from the average velocity of the group because the streak of B wants to pull the group to the new location. And finally, you know, just a kinetic energy term, uh, you want not to be too tired and exhausted. You want to end up where you want to go. So that's the cost of, of the streak of B. Now, uh, what are the cost of the little worker Bs? Okay, so they have, again, a cost uh, with three components. The first component is that, uh, you know, they want their velocity to be similar to the velocity of the streak of B. So they, they want to follow uh, the streak of B. They decided to do that, so they want to do it. So that's the first term. Uh, the second term, the term is that they want to stay in a group. So they want their individual velocity not to be much different than the average velocity of the group. And finally, again, they want to end up uh, where they want to be. Namely, uh, they do not want to get exhausted too quickly. Okay? So, so that's the finite uh, player game. Uh, you write the, the optimal, uh, you write the, the limit as n tend to infinity as a mean field game. And this is one uh, uh, example of, 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 of numerics uh, that you would get. So in this particular case, you know, this is silly. There is no new location. I take the, the velocity to be uh, circular. Okay, so this is the velocity in use of t. Is that, um, uh, and, so, and, and you see uh, in, in black the trajectory of a streak of b following this velocity. And then at a distance, remember the the position is not part of, of the model. So if they start from different places, the, there is a plot of 10 trajectories of 10 of these worker bees, and you know, they try to move around in circle, move around in circle. Again, the position the, doesn't matter, but this is for a certain number, a certain set of coefficient, the relative value of the, of, of the penalty. But if you start monkey around with these, um, with these coefficients, um, you know, even though the velocity, the, the optimal velocity uh, is the same, uh, well, you know, the, the streak of B is not even going to follow that, and, uh, and the, the, the uh, worker Bs are not even going to follow it, okay? So, so that's, that's a typical, that's a typical um, uh, example. Ah. There was another slide where, uh, you know, the velocity nu was linear, and then you could see also that uh, the worker bees were following. Uh, so, so you're going to have to buy the book to find the other plot. And, and let me tell you how outrageous it is. I mean, Francois is not even as upset as I am, but, you know, they want to sell this crap for $149 a volume. Who is going to buy it? So, you know, if you have, I mean, I know people have ways to do it. Just get a copy, don't have to buy it because, you know, this is ridiculous. 149, so multiply by two, that's basically 300 bucks. It's just ridiculous. But you would have more pictures. All right. <laughs> so, 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 that's what is, so this plot is, is an illustration of what's really behind a uh, mean field game. Uh, Stefan, when do I have to close? Hmm? Okay. Okay. All right. So, so this is an illustration of what's behind the, um, the, 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 the theory of mean field game, which is based on a result you're going to hear uh, about over and over and over during the week and presumably during the, uh, the many weeks if you stick around, is the propagation of chaos. Here, it's a simple form of conditional propagation of chaos uh, in the following sense. What I did here uh, is I took five, five uh, worker bees, five minor players, okay? And I'm conditioned, I generate one path uh, 
for the white noise of the uh, major player, namely the streaker B. Okay? So this, what I, we're seeing here, is conditioned. This is conditioned on uh, the white noise of the major player. Okay? But condition on that, uh, I take my five streaker Bs, and I look only at a group of five streaker Bs. I simulate, I simulate their, their uh, position, and I compute uh, the correlation matrix. So if you compute the correlation matrix, you see that you have, uh, so it's a five by five uh, uh, matrix. And on the diagonal, you have uh, high terms. They should be one. And outside the diagonal, it is still um, relatively uh, high, but it's definitely uh, non-zero. Now, if, you, if I redo the same thing, but my five um, uh, minor players, I looked at them in a group of 10 minor players. Okay, so I redo the same simulation. I have now 10 um, minor players, only one uh, path of fixed path of the uh, white noise of the major player. And I do the same thing, and I compute the correlation. And it is uh, much lighter outside the diagonal. And now if I take uh, 20, and if I take 50, and if I take 100, you see that my correlation matrix is diagonal. Given the fact that we are linear quadratic, this is a Gaussian model, so this means that they're independent. So in other words, you know, when the bath, when the field of particle is larger and larger, a fixed number of particles behave exactly as if they were independent. Uh, here it's conditioned on the, on the uh, white noise of the major player, but among themselves, they behave as if they were independent. And this is really um, at the root of, of the mean field game theory. This is a mean field interaction, and in for a large system, we expect propagation of chaos, namely that each single little guy uh, becomes independent of everybody else. All right? All right, so now I want to finish with discussing uh, another example. And this is an example borrowed from uh, a small paper of uh, uh, Kolokolsov and uh, um, uh, Alain Ben Soussan. They have a small uh, example of uh, what they call a botnet uh, cybersecurity model. Okay? And this could be a model of uh, uh, infection, of uh, disease, or this is a uh, 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 simple model. The idea is that now we do not have stochastic differential equation, but we have a state space instead of being RD. It's a state space with four states, uh, DI, DS, UI, and US. Uh, for, uh, so, so the situation is the following. So uh, we all have uh, a computer here, and, um, and uh, you know, we may be worried that they're gonna have, uh, we're going to have an election. Uh, oh, no, you did that already. Done. So, so we're going to have an election, and we may be afraid that some foreign power may try to uh, mingle with our election. You know, that's something that, no, it never happens. I know. I know. <laughs> it's a hoax. It's a hoax. So, so, so we may uh, worry about, uh, you know, someone attacking our, our computer system. So the, 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 the interest that I had in, the, in this particular model and the reason why I'm still working on this very simple model is the following. And I may not have much time to, uh, uh, to, to discuss it uh, uh, today. And, and I was trying to make um, a numerical computation for that. The, the, the question that I want to address is the following. And I will not be able to address it in full now. Let's imagine that we use a mean field game model like Kolokostov and, and Ben Sousa. What this means is that we're going to let every single one of you selfishly, selfishly makes a decision. I'm going to buy a, a computer protection, uh, an antivirus, and I'm going to install it. Uh, who cares? You know, I'm, I never got infected before. I'm not going to be infected now. So everybody makes his own decision selfishly. You have. Uh, some worry about what you have on your hard disk. You know, you, uh, 
uh, your attachment to your file, to your PDFs, to you know, pictures of your girlfriend or your mistress or whatever that is, you want to protect that. And you know, depending on the value you put on it, you know, you're going to make a selfish decision. Of course, you know, when you do um, uh, in, in a mean field game, we're going to anticipate or we're going to try to estimate what the, the average of the people do. So we're going to look around and see, uh, you know, um, you know, if 90% of the people are infected in the room, you know, I, maybe I do not enter the room or I wear a mask or, you know, I, I'm going to be very careful because the probability that it's going to be infected is higher. On the other hand, if no one is infected in this room, why would I buy, well, why would I take antibiotics? There's no reason for me to do it because no one is going to infect me. No one is infected, okay? So, so we're going to try to guess uh, what is happening uh, with these computers, and we're going to make a decision. But the decision is very selfish. These controls, in terms of uh, the terminology, are called distributed control. Namely, we make the decision on the basis of our state and nothing else. Okay? So this is what we're going to do. In cybersecurity, many, 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 many papers have been written using uh, um, um, game theory. But the way things are done is that we assume that we have a network of computers and there is a network manager. You know, your department hires some uh, dude to take care of your computers. And the manager decides, OK, so actually, he doesn't ask you. He is installing uh, you know, an antivirus on your machines without you being aware of it. Uh, so the game is between an attacker, a hacker, and, and a computer manager but not the hacker and the network, okay? So if you want to have a mean field game problem, what we're going to do is we're going to have a hacker, you know, attacking the computers, and we're going to have a bunch of people uh, making their own decision selfishly, all right? Selfishly, I insist, selfishly. So that's what uh, you do in mean field game. Now, the issue is the following. Um, and and that, that was my question, you know, is it worth to spend the money and hire a computer manager for this network? Or should we leave it uh, to people to do whatever they want? Okay? So, so there is a price to pay. In a mean field game, as opposed to a centralized decision by the computer manager, or, or uh, you know, the, the, the minimal cost will not be as low uh, if we let people deciding on their own selfishly, as opposed to uh, the cost to the society if we have a, a regulator making the decision for everybody. Okay? And the question is, how different are they? You know, if, if the cost is only twice what it would have been, maybe I don't care. I'm not going to hire uh, a, a, a network manager. You know. Statistically, that's not on the other hand, if the difference between the two is a factor of 10 or 100, then maybe I'm worried, and I'm not going to let people um, optimize uh, selfishly. So, so in game theory, this is what people have called the price of anarchy. Okay, so when people optimize selfishly, uh, we can think of it as, uh, as anarchy. I mean, some people do that. Actually, the, the name was tossed by two Greek people. So. Um, but um, uh, that's, that's what I, I, I want to study uh, for, for this problem. So let's see uh, oops, uh, what we're going to do. So when the state space is finite, when the state space is finite, well, the dynamics are given by, by, by a Q matrix. And the Q matrix is going to be a function of two states. It's going to be a matrix. The rows have to sum up to 0. But we're going to have two parameters. One will be a parameter for the measure, the statistical distribution of the states of the other players, and then a control to, to, to affect the rate at which the state will change from uh, one state to another. To make my life easier, I mean, this is what already in the model of Kolokosov and uh, Ben Susan, you know, we're going to take the control to be 0, 1. Zero, I don't do anything. I'm happy with what is going on. One, I started panicking. Uh, I see some of my neighbors being infected. So uh, I'm going to change my level of protection. 
Okay, I'm going to go from one protected to protected or uh, protected to unprotected. Okay, what I um, emphasize here is that again we're going to take a, a feedback uh, uh, Markovian control, so they're going to be function of uh, the state xt, the state being, as I said, you know, one of these four uh, states. And if I look now at the evolution of the distribution, uh, this is given by for planck kolmogorov equation, which is almost a linear equation, uh, except for the fact that the measure enters in the coefficient. So it is a form of uh, mckeen vlasov equation, even though it is for a continuous time Markov chain. Okay? Um, we can write a Hamiltonian. We can uh, minimize the Hamiltonian when we are lucky. If the state of control is finite, so that's going to be easy. We have a minimized Hamiltonian, and we also have an HEB equation. Uh, that's easy. In the particular case of uh, this uh, uh, model of Kolokolsov and uh, and Ben Susan, if the control is zero, I do nothing. This is the transition from one state to another, a di, ds, ui, and on the horizontal, uh, the, the, the columns are called di, ds, ui, and us. Okay, and you know these coefficients have some meaning. Beta are rate at which um, uh, you get infected uh, if you're defended, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you see the measure uh, mu appearing. Uh, in the transition uh, in the Q uh, matrix, okay? So, so it is not uh, going to be um, uh, a typical uh, linear Fokker-Planck equation. That's going to be a, a nonlinear Fokker-Planck equation. In any case, uh, you can solve uh, your, your mean field game problem. And if I plot here the time evolution of the distribution in equilibrium, Distribution will be, you know, four probabilities. I have a probability to be defended and infected, defended and not infected, not defend myself and be infected, and not defend myself and not being infected. If you start with equal probability of these four states, you know, uh, things uh, uh, change and evolve over time. If you start with uh, a delta function, all the, uh, I cannot read from here, but all the computers are in one specific state. Uh, they evolve, uh, the distribution evolve in this way. What you can notice is that these uh, distribution becomes constant over time. And, and, and so that's uh, um, basically screaming for, for an ergodic model, uh, a, a steady state model. And indeed, this is what um, uh, Kolokolsov and Ben Susan studied. Um, uh, an infinite horizon ergodic model where they took uh, one coefficient uh, to infinity to make their life easier. Okay, but you can solve that. Um, uh, you can solve that completely. We can talk about the master equation and solve it and recover the same result. I'm not going to um, worry about that. So what I want to emphasize is just two words about uh, this um, uh, price of anarchy uh, bound. In other words, you want to compare. So now let's imagine uh, we, we get rid of the hacker. The hacker is simply a parameter in our model. We to look only at the mean field of the computer in the room. Okay? And so, and there is, uh, I don't know, a 60% intensity of attack by the hacker. Okay? And we want to decide, you know, what is the cost to the group uh, if we defend ourselves by not following a policy imposed by someone else? or if there is uh, a central planner making the decision for everybody and telling you this is what you're going to do, this is how you're going to behave. Okay? And so, as I said, the cost to everybody will be lower uh, if the central planner comes in. And, and, and the idea of this price of uh, uh, anarchy bounds is to find how much uh, worse are we uh, by uh, letting uh, everybody make their own decision. So, just two minutes. If we are n players, n computer uh, uh, in the room, uh, you know, we can imagine that uh, uh, the state of our computer evolves according to a continuous time mark of chain, and uh, each player is going to minimize uh, a cost uh, of, of this type. And here, this is the cost to player i, hence the state xit. And this is the empirical distribution of all the other 
uh, uh, computer. And sorry, what would be, what would be the cost uh, to the group? So we're going to take a cost per player. So we're going to take 1 over n, the sum of the cost to all the players. And if you uh, play around a little bit and uh, you take the limit as n tends to infinity, uh, if there are no common noise, uh, you know, the empirical measure are going to converge to a single measure. And the social cost is going to be of this form. You know, the running cost, including the measure mu t, the terminal cost, including the measure mu t, but now it's going to be integrated out because of this 1 over n sum from 1 to n with the same measure mu t. So, so this is the social cost if everybody used the control phi, and if mu is the distribution of the state of the player. Okay? And so what we're going to have to do is decide how do we um, uh, study this, uh, this, um, this social cost. The mean field gain problem is one way to solve it where the control phi and the measure mu t are tied by a very tight constraint, uh, while the social cost optimization will be uh, leading to a very similar, very similar optimization. But the, the control fee and the measure mu will not be tied by such a tight constraint, and the minimum uh, will be lower. And again, as I said, you know, I, I didn't have time uh, to, uh, to go any further. But you, know, you have now, when you study the social cost problem, you have now a control of the mckeen vassov type, even though uh, it is purely deterministic. But it's in the space of measures, and you have to solve an HGB equation in the space of measures. When the space, uh, the state space is finite, things are easier. But, um, but um, um, I'm done. Obviously, the guy is tall, big, young, so I'm not going to fight. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much. One quick question before lunch. Excuse me, I, I want to ask for the, um, for the open uh, loop uh, strategy. I didn't well understand, in fact, uh, because uh, the SDE for the representative uh, agent um, is, uh, uh, is given in a weak sense, the, the Brownian the uh, WT. It's, uh, I'm not sure that I understand the question yet. But yes, it's expressed to to uh, to express the limit behavior uh, in low. No, so when you write the strategy uh, um, alpha, it depends on the path of the Brownian motion W. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, W uh, the Brownian is um, just a tool to to uh, to write uh, the SDU for the representative agent in a weak sense. I mean, so I didn't. Uh, do you understand my question? The, the, the remark I was making is that mm. if I think of a game or a control problem where I'm going to actually implement the optimal control, okay? So in other words, I want, when I see the solution, or when I see the system evolve at time t, I want to be able to implement my control. I want to decide where the bees are going to go, how to change the velocity. I have to have a function of something that is hopefully available to me. Yes. And the question is that for open loop, you take a function of the path of the Brownian motion. And you know, this is not something that we observe directly. Yes, we don't observe it. Yes. So mathematically, this is you know, what, a progressively measurable process. So it's cool. You know, there are spaces of these processes. We put an integrability condition, expectation of some 0 to t of the square is finite. We have a nice little bit of space. And we can do mathematically a lot of things. However, if you want to implement it practically uh, or do it numerically, I mean, uh, unless you're going to solve that this, uh, during the this summer school, mm -hmm. you know, this is a tough, uh, tough challenge. Um, so this is what I say. However, you know, mathematically, and you know, the first uh, papers we wrote with Francois on the subject, we were using uh, open loop control uh, and open loop uh, Nash equilibria. But unfortunately, I, I believe this is not very practical. It's useful mathematically, but not, yes, okay. not always practical. Okay, thank you. Thank you again. 
Euh, oui. Bon. <rires>